Alright, so we officially have all of the details and animations for the upcoming Part 2 LRs. And to my surprise, at least, the Vegeta that we saw in the previews is actually going to be an exchange Vegeta and Goku, which is pretty awesome. And of course, the other LR we'll be getting is this uh, LR Krillin and Gohan that comes with a costume change mechanic. So obviously we will be breaking down everything that both of these units do in a second. But before we do that, we gotta check out the animations for these LRs. So let's uh, pop over to the official Dokkan Twitter page here. And I'ma just turn off my own music. And here we go. Okay, good start, good start. Not bad at all. Okay, so that was actually my first time seeing the animations all the way through, and uh, they're great. I think they're phenomenal, man. I mean, I can't say they're the best animations I've seen, but given the fact that my hype level for this unit when I first learned about them was like a 5 out of 10 maybe, after seeing these animations, I would say it's at a, at a 7 now. Now, of course, we haven't like talked about the details yet, and I do think both LRs are going to be quite good, but nothing groundbreaking, nothing game-breaking, but of course, we'll get to that in a second. But animations-wise, really, really clean. Really, really clean. I really got nothing to complain about. I really like the um, animation where they're like exchanging or changing into the Saiyan armor. I think that was awesome. So that is the LR Krillin and Gohan for you. Now let's move on to the Vegeta and Goku, which uh, I expect to blow me away. So we'll see. Here we go. Let me just actually go to the beginning here. Here we go. Oh my god. Okay, um, I think it's pretty clear who wins here. I mean, between the two LRs, like, it's not even close. 
it's not even close. Both the Vegeta and the Goku animations, especially, especially the Goku animations after the um the revival happens, right? And just the change in the music, like it got me going for a second, man. Like that was quite emotional. Um, and then uh, yo, I love what they did with the Goku. I mean, Vegeta looks great, but the the Goku with like the like black like kind of cut ins, you know, like with the slicing and everything. Like, hold on, uh, let me see. If I, there we go. That this, this is what I was talking about. That's crazy. I don't think we've ever seen that before. I've never seen that before. Is there another unit in this game that does that? I don't think so. That's like a whole new way of like doing animations. <laughs> I think it looks awesome. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was already more hyped for the Vegeta unit before I knew it was Goku and Vegeta. And now it's like, I'm at like a 9.5 for this one out of 10, of course, compared to the Krillin and Gohan, which is like a 7, you know? Like, I still want Krillin and Gohan, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, between the two, like, this is easily the one I want the most. But uh, before we keep going, let me actually turn on the music again so it's not too quiet. There we go. And let's check out these animations. Or sorry, we just checked out the animations. Let's check out the details for both units. So starting with the Vegeta and Goku here. Uh, as you can see, the Vegeta starts off as Extreme Int. And then once you exchange into Goku, I'm assuming it becomes Super Int. Let me just quickly confirm though. Yes, so you go from Extreme Int with Vegeta to Super Int with Goku. And uh, leader skill is Planet Namek Saga category key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 130% or int types key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%. Uh, passive is key plus 3, attack plus 150% plus an additional uh, key plus 2 and defense plus 150% when HP is 30% or more. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% when attacking and then if HP is 29% or less at the start of the character's attacking turn, revives with 70% HP, recovered by exchanging with Goku when the character or an ally attacking in the same turn is KO'd once only. Alright, so obviously revival skill very similar to the uh, UI Goku, SSB Vegeta, except for the fact that the HP restriction is kinda insane. 29% HP or less um, is kind of hard to get. It's kind of hard to get that without like dying first, you know what I mean? Like to, to start a turn with 29% or less not having died the previous turn is kind of rare. Um, so it looks like you're not actually going to be getting this revival, this exchange into Goku very often. I mean, it, it is unique in the sense that like we're getting both a revival and in an exchange at the same time. I, I kind of like what they're doing here, but I just wish the HP thing wasn't so low, man. I wish the the restriction for the active skill, or the revival skill rather, was just a little bit higher. Um, so yeah, that really sucks. Because for Goku and Vegeta, it's 50%, which is much more manageable, right? It's 50%, right? It's been a while since I've got a revival skill, so... I kind of forgot, but I think it's 50% for Goku and Vegeta, where for, you know, this Goku and Vegeta, it's 29%. So, very unfortunate. Outside of that, though, I mean, obviously just some really good um, attack and defense buffs for the Vegeta. You get up to 5 key, you get up to something like 200% attack and defense, probably even a bit higher with the way it's calculated. So, he is going to be hitting pretty hard. He is going to be getting some really good defense. It's just, I wish, once again, the revival skill wasn't so hard to get, right? Uh, links are Brutal Beatdown, Prodigies, Saiyan Pride, Saiyan Warrior Race, Prepare for Battle, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And then for the super attacks, the 12 key super raises attack and defense and causes, oh, sorry, attack and defense for one turn causes colossal damage. And then the 18 key super raises attack and defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. And then the uh, condition here, once again, if HP is 29% or less at the start of character's attacking turn, revives with 70% HP recovered by exchanging with Goku when the character or an ally attacking in the same turn is KO'd once only. And then we have the Goku here. So exchange into Goku makes you super int instead of extreme int. 
And then, uh, of course, leader skill stays the same. Super attack, or rather the passive, is Q plus 3, attack and defense plus 159%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 59% when performing a super attack, plus an additional Q plus 3, and reduces damage received by 30% when there is an extreme class enemy. Pretty nice. Uh, high chance of performing a critical hit when there is a planet Namek Saga category enemy. So, um, yeah, essentially you're getting a slight bump in the attack and defense boosts. You're getting one more key and also 30% damage reduction if you're facing extreme class. That's one more key compared to Vegeta. And, um, you know, high chance, so 50% chance for a crit when you're facing planet Namek Saga. Uh, links are all in the family, Kamehameha, Saiyan Lineage, Saiyan Warrior Race, Prepare for Battle, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And uh, categories are... Oh, you know what's interesting is that when you exchange, I guess when you exchange with the card though, like, it doesn't change the categories, right? Because obviously Vegeta, or Goku is not in Vegeta's family, but because the card starts as Vegeta, it's still going to be Vegeta's family as opposed to Goku's family. So, just something I never really thought about, but I guess that makes sense. So categories for this card, uh, Planet Namek Saga, Pure Saints, Dragon Ball Seekers, Vegeta's Family, and Human Deeds, Gifted Warriors, Planetary Destruction, and a Powerful Comeback. And uh, Super Attacks, I believe the same as Vegeta's, so raise attack and defense for one turn, colossal damage, and greatly raise attack and defense for one turn, and causes mega colossal damage. Wait, does Vegeta greatly raise attack and defense as well? Oh, he doesn't. Okay, so yeah, the 18 key super for Vegeta just raises attack and defense, and causes mega colossal damage, whereas the Goku greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, and causes mega colossal damage. So that's the difference right there. And uh, that is the Goku and Vegeta exchange card. Now, I think they're pretty good, like pretty decent, but honestly, a bit of a boring card without the exchange. And the exchange is going to be so hard to get that you're rarely going to see it. So most of the time, like 90% of the time, you just got this Vegeta. So if you remove this revival skill part, um, it's just going to be like attack and defense plus... 200 something percent and key plus five which is okay right that's good i mean more than okay it's very good but the point i'm trying to make is like not super exciting without the revival exchange thing and if you do get the revival and exchange thing goku is i mean the animations are insane i already I already said that a million times the animations are fantastic but it's passive it's also kind of just a little bland, I guess, right? You're just getting the key boost, attack and defense boost, some damage reduction if you're facing extreme class. Um, and then, you know, on the off chance that you're facing Planet Namek Saga, which would happen once in a while, but probably not too often, you get the high chance to crit. So, like, I'm not really that blown away by this unit. You know, like, I love the animations. The animations blew me away, but the actual details of the, of the unit uh, doesn't quite get me super hyped. Maybe it's just the first impression thing, maybe if I like think about it for a bit longer then I'll change my mind, but right now like they just look good but not super good I guess. Or maybe I just wish they could have done a little bit more with this unit. Anyways, let's move on to the Krillin and Gohan. Um, let's see, so yeah Krillin and Gohan they start off in their regular uniforms and then they change into the Saiyan armor, so uh, leader skill is rapid growth category, key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 130%, or AGL types, key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%, passive attack and defense plus 130%, and medium chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, plus an additional key plus 1 per key sphere obtained, I like that, plus an additional attack plus 50% when performing a super attack, and then launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack when key is 24. Changes into a battle suit when conditions are met. And then links are Kamehameha, Solid Support, Cold Judgment, Infighter, Tracking Speed, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And then for their uh, active skill, it can be activated starting from the third turn from start of battle once only, and it gives them a key plus 24 for one turn, which is fine, kind of like the uh, Turles uh, active skill actually. So, you know, decent active skill, not too crazy though, I guess. Um, especially if you consider the fact that because they get 
he plus one for every key sphere obtained, like additional he plus one, it's gonna be pretty easy uh, to get them that 24 key super anyways, at least in theory. So I'm not sure if the active skill was like super necessary. Like it's nice to get a guaranteed 24 key super. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying like they're not really having key issues um, to start with. Anyways, uh, what else do we have here? The super attacks. So 12 key super raises attack and defense for one turn and causes colossal damage. And then 18 key super greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. And then for their outfit change conditions, changes into a battle suit upon entering next attacking turn after performing four or more super attacks in battle. Now, as you guys know, not a huge fan of these, uh, you know, like X number of super attack conditions, but given the fact that they can launch up to uh, three supers in a turn, right, with the passive here as well as your hidden potential, and they are an AGL type unit, so they do get five free additional in their hidden potential to start. So, um, yeah, given that fact, it's not too bad. So you change into the battle suit when uh, after performing four or more super attacks, and once they change into the battle suits, their passive does change. So the new passive is attack and defense plus 150% and medium chance of evading enemies attacks, including super attacks, plus an additional key plus one per key sphere obtained, plus another additional key plus one if it is a rainbow key sphere. So rainbow key spheres now give them a key plus three, okay? Plus an additional attack plus 58% and medium chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, when performing a super attack. So, when I first saw this part, it confused me a little bit because I was like, they already have a medium chance of evading enemies' attacks. But then I was like, oh, so I guess it's like a medium chance on top of a medium chance. So, if you do the math, I guess it's maybe closer to a high chance of evading enemy attacks or something like that. I don't know what the calculation actually is, but I'm assuming it's gonna be closer to like 50% as opposed to the regular 30% for medium chance. Or maybe like 45%, maybe just below high chance. I'm not really sure, but I think that's how it works. And then uh, finally launches an additional attack that has a medium chance, or sorry, has a great chance of becoming a super attack when key is 24. And uh, what else do we have here? I think the super attacks are the same, uh, but let me check. So raises attack and defense for one turn, causes colossal damage, and then greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, causes mega colossal damage. So that stays the same. But uh, now we're back to the beginning. All right, so there you go, guys. Those are the animations, or the de I keep I keep confusing animations and details. I don't know why, but those are the details for the Krillin and Gohan. And uh, this one, I feel like, is a bit more unique than the Goku and Vegeta. Um, they do have an active skill, which is solid, even though I feel like the active skill could have done more. Maybe the key plus an additional attack or defense boost or something like that, or debuff the enemy. I don't know, something more than just key plus 24. And, um, oh, you know what's interesting? Uh, do they get to reuse the active skill? after they do the costume change. That's what I'm not sure about. Hmm, like does it get reset or? It says ones only, but yeah, I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Inconclusive, inconclusive. If we can reset it, then that's gonna be much better than I originally thought, all right? But I'm not sure right now. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this unit looks pretty good too, you know, good attack and defense boost. Um, possible chance of launching three supers, but a lot of times, you know, every other turn, you're probably going to be getting at least two supers, which obviously is very good. And then the chance to dodge, the uh, additional key for key spheres, it's going to make it really easy to get 18 slash 24 key supers. So, um, yeah, overall, just a very, very solid LR. The links are actually not as bad as I was expecting. I mean, you got Kamehameha, you got Fierce Battle, Legendary Power, Talking Speed, Solid Support, like, you know, some decent links, right? Like, they're not gonna... I don't think they have a linking partner with, like, maybe seven links shared, but probably you can find one with, like, five. Maybe even six. I gotta think about it. Maybe LR Krillin? 
possibly. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, man, this unit is looking pretty good. And of course, the Vegeta and the Goku look good too. But if I'm going to give you my honest opinion, um, I'm, you know, if I were to do like a pass or pull video, like a should he summon video, I think I might recommend a skip for a lot of people just because like these both look really good, especially the animations, especially the animations. But I don't think either LR is a must have. If that makes sense. I don't think you need to have either of these units. And especially if you have like the dual Dokkan Fest LRs, the, the full power Frieza and the Super Saiyan Goku. If you have those two, then yeah, I just don't think these guys are really that necessary to have. Of course, they're going to be nice to have. They're going to do good damage or maybe even great damage. They're going to get good defense, but there are better things around the corner, I feel like. So, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence about these guys right now. Of course, every single time I see these animations, I'm like, yo, I gotta summon. I gotta have these guys. And I will be summoning, don't get me wrong. Like, for from a content creation perspective, like, I am gonna summon always for new banners, but... I'm just thinking about it from the perspective of, like, a, you know, free-to-play player, or just, like, an average player. I'm not so sure if it's really that worth it to go for these guys, especially considering, you know, they are gonna be on a... Legendary Summon Banner, which uh, is just never really that good to spend too many stones on. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about these units. What you guys think about the animations. Do you plan to summon? If so, how many stones do you think you're going to spend? And uh, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. That is today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And... If it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.